What's up, everybody? Big Herc, getting down fresh out, and you tune into another edition of Prison Talk. I want to say thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thanks for all your support. We try to keep everything as raw and real as possible. And one of, what we want to share with you today is um, a little update on what I personally know about the coronavirus inside federal prison. Um, I spoke with somebody earlier that's currently doing time on the East Coast and they uh, have an individual in their, in their system that recently tested positive for the coronavirus. Um, this person at this federal facility um, was already compromised. They had had a, a kidney surgery, therefore their, their body was um, a little bit more susceptible because of that. And this person was taken to an outside hospital and tested positive and has been brought back, put in isolation. And now um, everybody who were, was involved with any type of movement, contact with this person is being tested. Um, now, mind you, this facility is a medical facility. And uh, the person I spoke with, this facility has already been locked down since the beginning of March. So your options at this facility was to either be locked down at work, and I guess it's kind of like a dorm type living situation, or you could have been locked in your cell. And, uh, you know, being in your cell, essentially they were gonna take you to the shoe. So the person I spoke with has been uh, communicating from their actual job. And um, all the food is being brought to the job site, to wherever they're being detained at, how's that? And uh, you can only eat with you and the other person within a, 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 a short proximity. You're not interacting with other inmates, so there's no free movement. They're locked down. Um, I, I think he said uh, 72 hours straight, then they get one day of um, fresh air for two hours. But at this particular facility, it's been rain, it's been snowing there, so they get snow every couple of days, and then it it dries up, and so the weather hasn't been really hot there. I think it's around 60 something degrees there right now. But uh, they told me at work right now they are wearing the N95 mask. Um, they wear gloves. This person um, works with other uh, ill patients. None of them with a compromised immune system. You know, they work with people more dealing with mental issues, dementia, Alzheimer's. And this prison has the most deaths in the BOP because it is a medical facility. So people are dying there all the time. But they are currently testing all the individuals, the orderlies, the guards, the nurses who have been traveling back and forth between um, caring for the person with the compromised kidney and dealing with the other inmates slash patients. Um, so I know there's a lot of stuff circulating on, on YouTube and social media about what's going on in some of the other prisons. And I'm not sure, you know, what facilities in particular. I know some of the facilities I've seen were state, but this is actually a federal facility. And uh, they do have a coronavirus patient there now. And uh, from what they told me, the warding is talking about locking down these individuals at their job until next year. So, <laughs> you know, these guys are not able to get fresh air daily, not able to really exercise, no movement because everything's being brought to them. The feds actually, to try to, you know, comfort some of these guys are, are offering 500 free minutes a month. Um, this person um, is actually going to petition to try to get released early because they don't have a lot of time left and they should be getting out anyway sometime next year. But, uh, you know, if they're letting people out like Stormy Daniels attorney, uh, Snitch 9, I don't see why some of these other solid guys who didn't snitch on anybody shouldn't be released for home confinement 
which uh, prevents, you know, uh, is less of a risk and prevents any, uh, you know, sp continual spread of the coronavirus. But um, I know there's a lot of people who have loved ones in the facilities and, uh, you know, they have limited access to the phones. I just was fortunate to get, you know, this call. And if you see a call from somebody you have doing time in the feds, it might say robocall caller. So make sure you guys answer because I thought initially it was uh, a solicitation, but it was actually um, an individual I needed to speak with. So, um, you know, that's kind of like an update of what they're dealing with. But, um, you know, the guards there, um, you know, they're all wearing masks. Uh, and like I said, this is a medical facility. So there are a lot of deaths. Um, this person said nobody else has tested positive for Corona there. Um, I know a lot of the guys there are very, uh, you know, very scared. They're, uh, you know, they feel like, you know, that they aren't really getting told everything. But as far as what they know right now, this person does have it. And it's just one individual. So hopefully they can... Um, you know, kind of keep it under wraps and, uh, you know, keep everybody else healthy. But I would say if you do have loved ones in there and they're not as, you know, not a public figure like, you know, the, the individual I mentioned earlier, Snitch9 and Stormy Daniels attorney, maybe uh, try to find out if these people can qualify for early halfway house, for early home detainment so that they could be home with loved ones and be more productive if, if there's nothing benefiting these people if they're already short they're not um you know uh violent violent uh offenders or ri or at risk why they shouldn't be sent home and you know we often forget about you know people if it doesn't affect us what their conditions are but there's a lot of people that are dealing with some pretty you know some pretty serious conditions and they're not able to even uh have the luxury of trying to move around somewhat, you know, even though we're still dealing with a situation here where they're putting restrictions on us. So just a little food for thought. And for you guys out there also, you know, take a look around your community and ask yourself, you know, dealing with this situation moving forward, have you guys seen the homeless in your area change as far as the numbers that are on the street and those who have been placed in housing, we haven't. I haven't seen any homeless wearing um, uh, face masks. I haven't seen any of them with sanitizer. I haven't seen any of them uh, participating in uh, self-distancing. And I haven't seen any of uh, the, the state or government officials enforcing any of these things to protect the rest of the public from the spread of the corona amount uh, among that demographic and i say that because you know they're pushing a lot of people into a position where they could be possibly homeless so it's really something to consider when you look at the scope of what's going on why haven't they addressed the homeless situation as it stands before that 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 situation rises and now you have uh people who had a place, who don't no longer have a place. Just some food for thought, you guys. Trying to create conversation and uh, consciously wake you guys up. Big Herc, getting down with Fresh Out. And this video is brought to you by Wix Splitter Plus. This product contains 2-propanol, which is the same ingredient as mentioned in the White House press briefing to kill the coronavirus. Use it on doorknobs, counters, elevator buttons, railings, seats, shoes, mail, packages, tray tables, TSA trays, gaming machines, suitcases, ticket dispensers, public transit, rental cars, at the airports, at the hotels, at restaurants, at bars, at grocery stores, casinos, taxis, etc., etc. 266 sprays per bottle, 2.7 ounces. Hey, we're trying to do our part to provide a great product pick you guys some up and Wix Splitter Plus, I keep you guys right.